Hey everyone, David Parsons here with another episode of The Nostalgia Trap. Thank you so much for joining me and for finding the show and supporting the show. Before we get started, I do want to annoy everybody by asking for money. Um, I don't know if I can overstate how important it is to, to be getting donations for this show at this point. I have been doing this show for almost four years now, um, trying to com- maintain a consistent presence on the web and trying to interview as many Marxist academics and radical writers and other people uh, across the political spectrum, mainly from the left, uh, because I think that's really, really important. There is a, you know, a quote-unquote resistance hashtag resistance to Trump going on right now. But I also think the, the, the really exciting thing, um, the, and I think that, that in the future, the thing that people will be looking to is the rising radical left. Young people supporting Bernie Sanders is one indication of that. You know, the rising membership in the DSA is another indication of that. Uh, but there's a lot of others too. And, and the fact that, you know, there are a, a, a rising number of podcasts that are kind of talking about Marxist issues, taking on socialism, taking these ideas seriously, you know, I want to keep doing this. I've this will be uh, this. This is the 78th episode, so we've done you know more than 90 hours of material, all available for free online. But you know, I produce the show myself. I do. All, I pay for everything. And at this point, having moved to California without a solid job um, in my pocket as uh, a contingent adjunct academic kind of guy who can't even get an adjunct job really at this at this point and is you know starting to put stuff together the the show is getting really hard to produce and i would really really appreciate being able to keep it up uh and being able to keep putting episodes up every week so if you're able to donate anything to the show now is the time to do it um it would really really help me you can find how to do that at patreon.com slash nostalgia trap all the episodes are up there and there's a button that says become a patron you can sign up there for as much money as you want to give a month. Even a dollar a month out of your checking account, you won't even notice it, would help would help sustain the show. So thank you for the people that are supporting the show. I really appreciate that. And if you are someone who's able to do that, I, I would appreciate you going to the website, clicking on Become a Patron, uh, and, uh, and donating a little bit of money to the show because I need it pretty badly right now. So what is today's show about? Today, I wanted to talk about Louis C.K., I don't think it's a secret to anyone that, you know, I'm a, I was a fan of Louis C.K.'s. Um, none of this stuff that's come out about him uh, and he's admitted to in the last week has really surprised me. I've become less of a fan over the years as Louis has become more of a, a really outspoken and annoying political person. His stuff on politics has been pretty awful to me. But this is uh, this is something beyond that. What what Louis is uh, is has confessed to now, and and that we know is a a, a, a big part of who he is, uh, is is really really super disturbing. And I wanted to talk to someone that that understood that. My guest is Peter Sabatino, who many of you may know is the producer of this show. He's the one that puts all the sounds and everything. He does a, a an amazing job on the AM FM stuff. But he he's the one that that handles these sound clips and turns them into the podcast. Uh, Peter's a really great friend friend of mine. I've known him since uh, we both worked at a horrible corporate pizza store um, in Ventura, California during the Bush years and became quick friends because we were both so alienated from American politics at the time. Can you imagine? Can you imagine that happening, being alienated from American politics? And we were we were, you know, in our early 20s at that moment. And we uh, became really close friends. We ended up uh, living together in New York for several years. And we always, um, you know, we, we as as Louis became popular, we we both were huge fans. And I, I wanted to talk to him about how we feel about how we both feel about it now, because both of us are, as you'll find out, very much, you know, done with Louis as as both a performer and as a, a, a person. But there's there's something larger going on. And I think I wanted to talk to Peter mainly to explore the kind of, you know, personal dimensions of liking an artist and finding out shitty things about them. But also, I, I kind of wanted to explore this whole Me Too hashtag revelations of sexual abuse in the halls of power thing that's going on in our in our culture right now. Um, because I think that there's a danger of, of, of kind of concentrating too much on the individual creepazoids 
um, that are doing this stuff and missing the kind of larger systemic and structural and power issues that allowed these guys to get away with it for so long. So we talked a lot about kind of how we can learn something from the Louis C.K. and Kevin Spacey and Weinstein and everyone else, how we can learn from these incidents, uh, but also like what these incidents have to tell us about the way the way that that capitalism is structured, the way that our society is made to 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 protect people and give them the power to get away with uh, indulging some of their uh, really disgusting behavior. So we kind of just wanted to, to, to think through these issues together. So I hope you enjoy this conversation. Um, and you can find more Nostalgia Trap stuff uh, all around the web. NostalgiaTrap.com, Patreon.com slash Nostalgia Trap. There's a Facebook page. You can find me on Twitter at David L. Parsons. Um, and again, uh, for those of you supporting the show, I, I can't overstate how important it is and how much it helps keep these programs on the air. It really is week to week for me. In, in, in a lot of different ways right now. And I really, really want to keep this show going. So uh, if you're able to donate to the show at all, now is the time to do it. Patreon.com slash Nostalgia Trap. That's the last time I'll ask, at least on this program. I'll ask on the next one. Uh, but I hope you enjoy this conversation. This is me and Peter Sabatino thinking through the dimensions of Louis C.K. and all the other garbage that we're finding out about this week. It's hard to know where to start uh, when talking about the, the Louis C.K. stuff, but I wanted to talk to you about it um, because, I don't know, um, you sent me that clip just now, and it, it it reminded me of how much I was already hating Louis C.K. for like the last, uh, I don't know, like at least year, I would say. I kind of like had a... The Louis C.K. The- from Louis C.K. from Conan. Yes, the clip. So, yeah. yeah, let's set this up a little bit. Now, Louis, I'm not doing my job if I don't ask you about the election. It's yeah. just a week away. Uh, you want to talk about it? Uh, who are you supporting? Uh, I'm going to vote for Hillary because... Yeah. Uh, I, and it's stupid to say because I'm a performer and so I'm splitting my audience in half, but right. uh, I think she's great. It's not a sec- like a lesser of two evils. I think she's great. I really like her. I think she's really talented. <laughs> And I think she's super smart, mm-hmm. and I think she's done this for, I, I would take her over anybody. There really isn't some, it's not because of, between the two of them, I would take her over any, anybody else that would do it. Um, and to me, it's really exciting to have the first uh, mother in the White House. That's what I think this is. It's not about the first woman, it's about the first mom. Now what is it about, about a mom? That's... Because a mother, she's got it. A mother just does it. She's got your, she, she, she feeds you and teaches you, she protects you, yeah. she takes care of A father, we've had 240 years of fathers. Yeah. yeah. Father after father, bald father, fat father, every kind of father. <laughs> And fathers are okay. I'm a father. Yeah. You're a dad. You're a dad. Yeah, yeah. We a, fa- a great father can give a kid forty percent of his needs. Top. <laughs> Top out of forty percent. <laughs> Tops out of forty percent. Yes. Yes. Any mother. That, that's optimistic. That's yeah. optimistic. Yeah. Any mother. A, just a <laughs> mother. Like just a not even trying mother. Two hundred percent. Like she can't. <laughs> mothers, <laughs> mothers do too much. Like at, what's the last conversation you had with your mom was probably mom. All right. Yeah. It's enough. Like yeah. they just, eh. They just keep. So to me, she's like, it's exciting to think about. I'm excited about this election because she, I don't want it to be the other guy just, look, if you vote, I'm not, I have no problem when anybody votes for Trump if that's your ideology. Uh, you know, although four more years of this, I don't know if we can do, because this is four more years of a guy who can't be uh, criticized. What's more important than, about a president than that you can all over them. That's what presidents are for. Yeah. I guy sucks. Like that's the point of the president is to get drunk and blame them for everything, everything and yes. accuse them of This guy every time he's criticized everything stops and he makes everybody pay. Yeah. That's not how it works. We need somebody who can take abuse. Yes. Hillary yeah. Clinton can take abuse. She's been taking it and taking it. This is what's been going on. We've been hazing her. We've been it's holding been her down and spitting in her mouth and yelling at her. And she just gets up and goes, well, I just think that if uh, children have proper health care and education, she just keeps working. Yeah. So I'm totally in it for her. Now, wanna... Louis, you have, you want people, yes, you want. Yeah. You really changed my mind. I was all in for Trump. Uh... <laughs> 
I'm glad you're here. Uh, but you know what? It's a, you are feel a specific need, or it's important to you that uh, people get out and vote, That's especially. There are some younger people out there, millennials, that say, oh, I don't know if this is yeah. there's a good choice for me here. I don't know if I'm going to vote or I'm undecided. What do you, what, exactly. Your... I don't have any, any uh, quarrel with somebody who votes uh, for Trump if that's what they feel that they want. Uh, it, it, but if you don't vote at all because you just, I don't know about her. She's like, if you're like a liberal who's not going to vote, you're a piece of <laughs> because Because, wait a minute, wait a minute. Because... This is what they're like, I don't really like her voice. Grow the are you kidding me? Grow up. I just don't, something about, we don't, I don't want somebody who's likable or cool anymore. We right. need a, just a, we need a two-faced, conniving, crazy, <laughs> just somebody who's just got, got a million schemes. And by the way, all her is out there. Yeah. Every email she ever wrote is in the newspapers and she's not in jail, which is amazing. <laughs> But just, we need just a tough bitch mother who nobody likes yeah. and who just does So this is my feeling overall. I think if you vote for Hillary, you're a grown up. Yeah. If you vote for Trump, you're a sucker. Right. If you don't vote for anybody, you're an asshole. Right. That's what I think, overall. I nice summation. Yeah. You put it together nicely. This one was like like literally the night before the election or or a week before the election. Yeah, a week before the election. Yeah, he goes on there and I totally forgot about this one. Like that he he went on there to uh you know, Conan asked him like who are you voting for as if anyone like has any <laughs> like there's any surprise <laughs> about like what he's going to say. But he was like he's like I'm all in for Hillary. And not only that, but he did this like very typical. And now, you know, we'll talk about this, but I think that this is like part of what makes him so fucking weird and creepy is that he was like, he did it under the, like the guise of like, uh, women and like women power, but like specifically about like mothers and like what great people mothers are and what like pieces of shit fathers are. And it was all like couched in like a very like typically like Louis bit, but it was painful, yeah. to, painful to watch. I, I was, I was watching it again. I hadn't seen it since it happened. I mean, I remember obviously being disgusted by it when I first when I first saw it, but even before the election. But I, I was rewatching it, and I literally was like watching him talk about mothers, picturing him whipping out his dick <laughs> to unwanted women. Yeah, yeah. Like, like he was saying mothers, and I was like, God damn, were any of those women mothers? Right. I just right. like it's just like a weird thing to. Because he talks a lot about like strong women and strong women and mothers and oh, yeah. in his comedy and, and in real life and he was always like sort of known as like a champion of women in a in a sense. Well, yeah, I mean, so uh, it's just w weird. It's gonna be weird, like going back to that stuff and listening to that and then picturing him, you know, whipping out his dick. Yeah, I try not to like literally picture it, but it's <laughs> <laughs> it's hard not to. You know. What? It reminds do, me of I what, um, like, Tig Notaro, who is one of the people that, like, was, uh, I think for a while, like, uh, she was one of the, the voices that was kind of partly responsible for this story breaking. But, like, she yeah. said, like, she was like, I think, she's like, I feel, like, fucking used by this guy because he, like, kind of produced my show and was all about, like, woman power and, like, very, like, you know, feminist comedian kind of thing. And she felt like she, that he was almost, like, using, using that for cover I don't know like yeah. how true that is, but it's it, like it, it's really fucked up. Like it really adds like an extra dimension to the whole thing. Oh yeah, I mean whether whether it was intentional or not, like maybe it doesn't matter. Maybe it's just the, the, it was a cover, you know. So it, yeah. I think he probably even subconsciously was doing it, which is very very bizarre, you know. Yeah, I, I, I'm thinking about like so. The reason I wanted to talk to you about this is because both of us, like you and I, like both, or I would describe myself at one point, I was like a huge Louis fan. Like, uh, definitely, Very much. like definitely, like caught the wave. I think a lot of like, especially like younger guys, or even maybe like not even younger guys, like guys in their 30s. He like kind of spoke to a population of like kind of like yeah. a certain generation of you know, bitter men that kind of like, he captured a lot of, I, I don't know, what, 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 do you remember the first time that you like encountered Louis C.K.? Because the guy has been around forever. Yeah, I, I actually do. I, I, I was at a friend's house and God, I don't remember the year, but it, it was pretty early, but it was, it was definitely past the point of like, you know, he had specials on, on, on TV and stuff, you know, yeah. so I didn't, I didn't know about him super early, but I remember someone showing me a clip. You're like, you got to check this guy out. He's crazy. And it was, 
the bit about how he wanted to contract AIDS so he could <laughs> fuck deer, so he could fuck deer and give them AIDS so yeah. they would die. Right. Because yes. he hates deer so much. I go out of my way to kill a deer. I would happily blow 20 guys in an alley with bleedy dicks so I could get AIDS and then fuck a deer and kill it with my AIDS. God, <laughs> how do we not see that this guy was an asshole? <laughs> so, yeah. It's so bizarre. Yeah, it's funny because I, I, I mean, I, and this is actually, he, he actually, I mean, I, I, I went down the rabbit hole of Louis C.K. many times, you know, like, like I yeah. loved watching the, um, because of the, the craft of his comedy. And I think that's part of what I wanted to do today was like a little bit of like a postmortem because I, I, you know, Louis has been definitely like, I don't know, I, I, I've lost, I, I lost respect for him and, and his, and his work like uh, a little bit over the last few years, especially as these, as these rumors were like starting to grow, but like, yeah. you know, his politics and everything. But there was a time where I was just like, really into the craft and that's why i wanted to do the post-mortem in part because you know louis himself like you know he talks about bill cosby and how like all these all, all these guys like loved bill cosby and bill cosby is their huge their their like inspiration yeah and now they're all dealing with like what do you do with uh with the work you know and 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 i didn't really care because bill cosby wasn't like I don't know. Did you watch Bill Cosby stand up? No, I, 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 I did not care. I did yeah. not care about Bill Cosby. I, and I, I actually already thought of Bill Cosby as a total fucking asshole because I knew him <laughs> as like the guy that like basically like told young black people to like pull their pants up and shit like that. He's like a <laughs> yeah, exactly. He's a douchebag a already. But I understand right. now because these guys have explained that like you know his stand up was uh you know really like the top of the craft and everybody loved it. And Louis was that way too. Like he's like one of the, I would say like one of the best comedians there ever was, but it's also like totally, I don't know. How does it change it? How does it change it for you? I mean, I, I think it, uh, for me personally, I, I, it completely changed it. Um, I think I, like you were saying this, his, his politics were kind of gross to me. So I sort of started kind of disliking him during the election when he said all that stuff. Mm -hmm. But this, this, I mean, this, I think is something, something totally different and, and equally as gross, if not more so. And uh, what I find interesting about Louis, Louis situation is because you can do, you know, you look at Spacey and you look at Weinstein and like everyone across the board, like, yeah, yeah, fuck those guys. They're done, whatever. But there's this weird thing going on with Louis. And I kind of went down the rabbit hole today and yesterday about, listening to um comedians reaction yeah to yeah. him and there's a lot of people people that like i sort of like maybe didn't even care about but still like what for one bill burr like i listened to what he had to yeah, say I, I, you know what, I, what, what did he say i started listening to it and i was like it, it sounded like he was kind of like um he was almost kind of like oh this is getting out of hand with a witch hunt kind of stuff yes yeah there's him and Several other like comedians that have podcasts, like this guy, I forget his name, DePaulio or something. He's kind of a dick. Oh, Nick DePaulio. Um, Nick, yeah, Nick DePaulio. I fucking hate both that guy. Them, yeah. Yeah. And both of them had basically said the same thing, which is like, of course, it's disgusting and we're not apologizing. But, yeah. And DePaulio said that like in the first like two minutes. He's like, that's disgusting. But it's always with this but. And, yeah. and the, their, their point was like, yeah, but he's not Weinstein. Yeah, or he he's not this. Cosby, and like they they want to like do the right. degrees. They're like, how bad is it really to like be like jerked off in front of you know kind of thing? Like they they just don't like really. They're not really doing the work of like being empathetic at all. They're like literally just like no, oh, like oh, it's not that bad, which is crazy. It's not that to bad. Me. Yeah, it's yeah no, it's 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 beyond crazy. Like, and I've noticed not that in my real life as well. Like just people talking to people. Coworkers and and uh, people, uh, friends and stuff, where they're very quick to like apologize for Louis C.K., which I find weird. Yeah, like even a couple women I, I know, like we're just like, yeah, but you what, know, what's the whatever. reasoning? Is it is it the, is it that like masturbating in front of someone is is not as bad as raping them? Is that literally what? Yeah, I think it's or like I think it's this. It, Bill, Bill Burr said it. He said, "Why does it all have to be lumped in together?" Like. When you're in the criminal justice system, you have, yes. you know, if you steal something, you get one crime. And if you murder someone, you get another, you know, you get another punishment. And why are we, why are we lumping Louie in with these, these people? And it's like, yeah, obviously raping someone is, is worse than 
whipping out your penis. I, to I guess. I mean, I, I don't women. even. I don't even want but, to be the person that says it's better or worse. It's all like to me. It's like yep. it's a, depending on how, how you experience that. Some people could be completely devastated exactly. by that experience, you know. And it's like it's just a weird right. conversation to have. And, and no one's trying to lump them in together. It's it's we're we're saying. Those are all. It's all bad. Yeah, and and, and, if, I were, and if I were in the room with Bill Burr, I'd be like, dude. First of all, the legal system does differentiate, you know, between all these things, and they're and and these guys aren't even going to be legally charged with anything anyway. Like I I, I don't right. think, like I don't think you think Weinstein's going to go to jail over any of this. No, or, come on, absolutely not, absolutely not. Spacey isn't. Nope. But like Louis, Louis definitely isn't. Like no. I don't think there's any any legality. But does he deserve to be like? Have everything taken away from him? Absolutely. Well, you I know? Mean, yeah, like, I, I, I wonder. I mean, I, I don't know. I wonder, like, if I could totally see, like, and this is what Bill Burr said, right? He was like, "Oh, he'll be back. He'll be back." And like, everyone's yeah, like, "He'll yeah. be back." And I'm even Louis himself in his in his um in his like New York Times statement. He was like, "I'm gonna go away for a long for a long time," indicating like I'm gonna take a break. Like, oh, I right. got caught being a total piece of shit, so I'm just gonna take a break. And I'll be back with like selling you new specials in a couple of years. And it's like, yeah, what, and, really? And, really? I, 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 I honestly can't rem- like imagine uh, him in a new special talking about this kind of stuff and like people laughing. Yeah, like to me that that, that sounds like so weird and disturbing. It's painful. Uh, like, who, like who would buy tickets? Like, you want to like I want to go tell uh, tell my wife like, hey, I bought you tickets for Louis. Like, we're gonna go see Louis. He's back. Like his comeback tour. And it's like, what? Like, who wants to the go see The thing is, though, that? I I think there's a lot of people. Tons that would. Tons, dude. Tons. I I think I, I mean I've I I've looked at um the play the cesspool where you get you know like a certain kind of male opinion is on reddit you know and like the reddit threads on on louis are insane dude they're like all they're all defending him like there's there are many who are doing the kind of like uh half and half but but most people are not just like uh, um just just like making straight moral judgments on it where like look he was discovered we know now that he's like uh, been uh, shitty for a long time, and he should go away for a, for a while. I mean, go away forever or whatever. Like the, everyone is, seems to like be hemming and hawing and trying very hard to like see his point of view, which is really weird. Very weird. Yeah. I mean, Depaulia even said something that was just like I, I wanted to, you know, reach to the computer and and, and punch him. Um, he was he was you know basically apologizing for him, saying, "Oh well, you know." Some of the women even stayed, and they agreed to it. Yeah, I'm like you, ignorant bastard. Like, <laughs> well, how do you like, not he, he, understand? Nick DePaulo. Nick that, DePa- that I think it's Nick DePaulo. He's like the he's DePaulo, been yeah. yeah he's been on Louis like a, a bunch of times, right? Like he like yeah and he was on, on Horace and Pete. Yeah, he's like um, he's the conservative voice always, quote unquote, which just yeah. means basically that he like says like racist shit, and like that's what qualifies yeah. him as conservative. Like he's like, oh, I'm the guy that's bra- that's brave enough to say racist shit, and it's like, that, like that's not really that brave, actually. But no. yeah, I I, I no, hate not, that guy, and I'm I, I didn't know that he was defending Louis, but I'm not surprised. So, um, did you listen to Mark Marin's? You said you listened. Yes, to him, I, right? I finally listened. I finally listened to the whole thing. I I, I mean, compared to those two, he he did a, obviously a, a much better job. Yeah, he's a little he's I a think? more thoughtful guy than them, I think. Right, right, but again, you know, there's there's a little bit of that, you know, at times, which was a, a, a kind of a little disturbing. And uh, of course, he ends it as like he's my friend, and I'm going to be there for him. But oh, it's like, God. I, I don't know if I would be if that was my friend. Yeah, I don't know. It's 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 weird, and and it feels like so many people now. It's it's just like. I don't know. It's like the Kevin Spacey thing. So many people knew. Like, like uh, everyone knew. I, yeah. I mean, I worked. I knew. I, and my mom, my mom actually called me because she was like, didn't you tell me about this a while ago? Because I, uh, I, I think I probably mentioned this on the show before, but I was a, I was a PA in Hollywood in like the early oh, 2000s. Yeah. And I worked on a, a set, set at Universal that was a sitcom. And the, the set next to us was shooting a film called K-Pax. Which is this awful, <laughs> like, really? I think that it's a movie. I love just telling the plot. The plot is about an alien in therapy. 
but but it's done, but it's done like seriously. Like it's not like a and like, the alien is and the alien is Kevin Spacey. Yes, and and you think like oh, <laughs> alien in therapy that that'll be really funny. Like there's a lot of like opportunity for satire or something. But no, they did it like a tearjerker. Like you're sad, yeah, super super serious. You're sad for the alien because he's in therapy and like talking about like his marriage and stuff. Um, you know what's really you know what's really sad is now we're never gonna get K Pax two. Oh man, it was like in production. <laughs> no, they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna replace him with somebody. I'm sure they'll just <laughs> oh with, uh, with Christopher Plummer. Yeah, Christopher Plummer is now the alien in therapy. Like basically, Christopher <laughs> Plummer is like yes right now. Like give me everything that Ke- I just inherited Kevin Spacey's entire career. But anyway, he's gonna have to start. He's gonna have to start doing uh, little, <laughs> little. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah, <laughs> he's like, t- he took it a little too far there, Christopher. Um, yeah. But yeah, on K-Pax. So anyway, I was working on that set, and it was really cool to see like Jeff Bridges and Kevin Spacey and everything. And Kevin Spacey was like on fire at the time because American Beauty had just come out like a year earlier, and he was like huge. And so it was like it was thrilling to see him. But he had a trailer there, and there were like a couple of like very young Asian men i would say maybe boys i think they were in high school that hung around his trailer and they were just they were his pals and they were in the trailer together all the time and everybody on our set made jokes like oh that's uh kevin is helping them with their homework ha 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 and we all kind of rolled their eyes and everyone kind of like there seemed to be this knowing like thing on the set that Kevin Spacey is yeah you know, prefers the company of very very young guys and so I kind of made jokes about that and you and I have made jokes about it over the years yeah like it's actually I mean what's amazing to me is like this shit shows up on Family Guy like they made jokes on about there, there's a web series I forget what it's called that that I saw that made like sixteen jokes in 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 like t- over two series like two seasons about Kevin Spacey like holding down yeah. young young boys and shit. So what, my question is like, yeah. what what the fuck then? Like, if everybody knew, like like Netflix Netflix obviously knew because as soon as one story came out, they just like they're like, oh, he's fired, he's he fired, we we quit, House yep. of Cards is gone. Yep. They just like dumped it all immediately. And you'd think that if they, you know, if this were really out of nowhere, they'd be like, no way, we're gonna keep House of Cards going. This is ridiculous. We're gonna fight this. But like, right. they they instantly shut everything down. And that re- that makes me think that Louis was the same way. Like Louis w- knew this was going to happen eventually. He was trying to get as much done as he could before it all broke, and yep. it finally broke. And so he's like, "Oh, I'm sorry, I'm going away." It's like there's something really disingenuous about it. Like only like p- saying you're sorry and that you're going away when you're caught. Well, all like the, all these all these guys, their their kind of uh, apology letters after the fact are like so disgusting yeah i mean what do you what do you do say nothing i don't know but like it's always it's it's just inherently disingenuous because you're only writing this because you got caught like you would have just gone on the rest of your life yeah probably doing probably doing the same stuff over and over again and now that you got caught it's like oh i'm going to sex therapy it's like oh my god like go to hell i'm going to sex therapy good god yeah and apparently Weinstein like went and it was just uh, uh, like was just disgusting and like didn't do anything and like laughed and took phone calls when he wasn't supposed to and like he doesn't care those guys don't care no and there's and no, it's... there's no there's no realization really for what they've done despite their like letters of apology or whatever no and in Weinstein I mean it doesn't even seem like it was I mean, I think the, I, I mean, I think the term "sex addiction" is pretty funny, but like the, but the, yeah. the like, oh, I'm a sex addict, and like, come on. Um, I mean, yeah. that the only people who go to like sex addiction therapy, um, that I that you hear about, like the celebrities that like get caught like cheating on their wives, like fifty prostitutes, and they're like, oh, I was addicted. <laughs> I'm an addict. You should actually like feel sorry for me. This is a pathology. But like, yeah, Weinstein. I mean, Weinstein didn't even apologize. First of all, but like, he, I mean, he didn't make, he made he's made no statement. I, I don't think, but like. The, yeah, sure. the the whole um the whole idea that that it's sex addiction it's like Weinstein's just to me like his his problem was like he's just like straight authoritarian power you know like this was all this was all yeah. just like a, I mean uh, it was definitely about his dick but it was also about like this head trip he was putting on everybody yeah. like this guy gets away with everything and like the fact again like everybody knew like it was just an open secret. Yeah. And it just makes you wonder, like, how many other like open secrets there are, like, everywhere. Oh, I'm, I'm, and I'm sure we haven't heard the end, or maybe even won't hear hundreds and hundreds of other ones, you know. But I, I, I think you hit the nail on the head here, which is 
the power. I mean, it, all of this is power. Yeah. Like every single one of these examples, it's like at the heart of it is powerful men taking advantage of their power. And in, in Louis, and in Louis's case, uh, you know, he did not, he did not do this to well-established female comedians or random women. He did it to struggling female comedians that looked up to him and needed his help. Yeah. And like, and I, I feel like people, I, I mean, obviously there, there are, there are people that are talking about this, but I feel in general, it's not it's stressed enough that this is like really at the core, like the, the problem, you know? Right. And, and that, I mean, it's actually, it makes me think about Bill Clinton because like Bill Clinton was you exactly, know, but I want to say one thing to the American people. I want you to listen to me. I'm going to say this again. I did not have sexual relations with that woman, Miss Lewinsky. I never told anybody to lie, not a single time, never. These allegations are false, and I need to go back to work for the American people. I, I wonder, like, because a lot of there's a media element to this too, as you know, you know, and like, of course, it makes me wonder, like, okay, if we're gonna do the Me Too thing, and like, I love this. I'm, I want to me, yeah. like, I have popcorn ready. I know that the world, especially the world of elites, whether they be Hollywood yeah. elites or political elites or whatever, are filled with fucking asshole dudes who are getting away with this shit exactly what for the reasons you just said, because they can. And like Bill Clinton, yeah. I wonder if he's going to be included in this. I really hope so, because I, oh, yeah. I mean, this guy, it's amazing how many women have like said shit about this guy for years and years and like the Democrats rape. Be, yeah rape like literal rape and Juanita Broderick literal has rape. A, alleged um, that and, and never changed her story that he raped her in yeah. like 1977 or 78 when he was governor of Arkansas and that um, yeah. that that the fact that that's not gaining traction I, I wonder if there will be like a if that'll eventually happen because, I, I really hope so there I was like go ahead no I just wanted to it's just because it's that media element. It's like, you know, we're going to find out about, we're not going to find out about him because the, you know, the Clintons are very popular among those people. Yeah. I, I think I, to me, that's why the kind of Louis thing is, is, is more, is, is interesting in yeah. the sense of like, I, I, I draw in a, in a weird way. I draw that parallel between Louis and, and Clinton because you have all these, uh, comedians now kind of apologizing for him or justifying it or saying it's not that bad or willing to look the other way or not even talking about it at all because he's fucking Louie. Yeah. In the same in the same way, liberals just turn the other way when you when, when you talk about the awful awful shit that Bill Clinton did. Yeah. Like if he would have done that stuff now, uh, God knows he would be in fucking jail. You well, know? I, I just imagine it on happening on the other side. What if Donald Trump were caught with like? Right. A, uh, what if Donald Trump were caught getting blowjobs from a twenty-one-year-old intern in the White House? Intern. Everyone would be talking about the power element of it, and I think there would be a yep. lot of people who would be saying not only did Donald is Donald Trump like a disgusting pig, but he's committing like an illegal, uh, Ill, possibly illegal, definitely immoral, unethical act um yeah. but you didn't hear that narrative too much and if you did people were like what are you like a right winger attacking bill clinton and it's like no like what he did was gross like an old guy yeah. that's the boss like like uh uh having having like a, a, a sexual affair with a 20 year old intern is is nasty shit and like it's fucking gross and yeah. like you know that 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 to me is just one indicator of his character and the fact that you can't even like make that judgment without being people thinking it's political is insane. It means that Clinton is just like totally protected. Still, still to this day. Yeah. I, you know, I don't know if you, is, if you heard this rumor. Do you hear about this? I mean, we've, I think we've probably talked about this before that like, th like, so Clinton had this, uh, this friend, Steve Bing, he had like a, an air, an airplane, like a private jet that he and Bill Clinton traveled around for years during, like during, um, uh, in the in the basically in the Bush years, so like two thousand after right after Clinton was president, he spent like many years hanging out with Steve Bing on the private jet, and the, people called it like nicknamed it Air Fuck One because the <laughs> because the rumor was that these guys were just like bringing girls on the jet, and that's how they got away with it. Like they partied on the jet, and they right. partied and had sex with all these girls on the on the jet. And from what I understand. And I think this is like more than rumor. I think this is like more or less confirmed that the Democratic Party in 2008, when the, when um, 
Bush was done and they were going to run either Obama or Hillary, the people within the Democratic Party that decided to like take their money and their um, po- their political energy and their power and give it to Obama, they were people that were like really concerned about this. Like they didn't want to go with really? Hillary because they thought. Bill is too much of a liability. He's basically spent the last eight years like on this airplane and touring the world with his friends, yep. uh, being like basically a frat boy and having sex with all these girls and everything like that. And they just basically thought it was too embarrassing and damaging. So in a lot, in a lot yep. of ways, that is why uh, a, a significant portion of the Democrats ended up supporting Obama, which is crazy. That is very crazy. And, 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 and Clinton never never like paid for what he did no and the, the only person that paid for it was hillary i mean you know how much i hate hillary clinton yeah i know but, but it's so like, fucked up it's so fucked up that yeah that's it's still so fucked yeah. up that she that she basically had to take the brunt of all this of his of her husband constantly sexually abusing yeah. <laughs> multiple women yeah I, like I, all over the world. Yeah, I mean that element of it. I mean, I I can I can freely admit that uh, you know I'm not a uh, Hillary Clinton fa- fan either, but like I can freely admit that she's got the 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 bad end of the deal, and that and that that yeah. has to do with. I mean, she's a woman, and like and and she's been. I can't. She must be pretty angry, like privately. I would be. I would be because, like, the guy has just humiliated yeah. her again and again and again. Um, but yeah, yeah. I, I, I mean, imagine, imagine, like, if that, if they didn't, if Trump didn't have that kind of report after, like, the grab the pussy incident and yep. all the other numerous examples of shit that he did. Yeah. If there wasn't that retort of like, oh yeah, Bill Clinton. Yep. Like, I mean, who knows if that would have made a difference or not? But like, yeah, it definitely had an effect. You know, it's all those all those Trump supporters probably you know hated her because of him. So yeah, yeah, uh, no, and, I mean, and, he, uh, and liberals. I mean, I, I would say like left people too. Like you know, yeah. I, including myself. I mean, I kind of connected her so much to her husband, which is kind yeah. of kind of fair and and unfair at the same time. But for me, I was never like, oh, I don't like Hillary because her husband cheats on her. I was like, no, I don't like her because no. of her Paul. Which is another thing about of any numerous thing. That fucking Louis clip you sent, that like yeah. uh, Conan yeah. thing. You know, like he's he, he's so he's so phony about about the 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 way he the way he characterizes the people that don't want to vote for Hillary. I don't know about her. She's like, if you're like a liberal who's not going to vote, you're a piece of because because wait a minute. he's like, oh, there's these people out here that are like, I don't even know what they say. They say that, that they don't like her voice or something. And they're like, uh, he's like, oh, fuck you. You're the worst piece of shit. And he gets like a huge like applause from the crowd. Yeah, because he's like, you're a piece of shit if you don't vote for Hillary Clinton or if you have problems with her because, you know, there aren't any real problems. And it's like, yeah, there are, dude. Like there are tons That's of real problems. So and it's actually those real problems are the reason so many voted for Trump. Yes. And it, it's it's like it, that. That's why that clip, like when when it came out, it was like almost like okay, I'm 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 done with you, Louie, because yeah. <laughs> it doesn't show like if he was just literally it's not very like, serious. Gay, yeah, it's not serious and just ignorant, just like not mm-hmm. not smart at all for someone who claims to be this like really smart guy. Like it's the the implication that there's no there's no bad reasons to not vote for Hillary or to to vote for Hillary Clinton is ridiculous. I mean, beyond ridiculous. Yeah. He's like, he, oh, yeah, I don't, I don't like her voice or I don't know. Right. He just like her. made this like caricature of like, uh, of, oh. of, of voters that, that won't vote for her. And, and it's, it's bizarre because it's weird. Cause at the at first he's like, I would vote for her, you know, over anybody else. He's like, I'm not voting her for her because right. she's the lesser of two evils. I really love her. She's like really great. She's amazing. But then like throughout the interview, like at, by the end, he kind of reverses himself and he's like, all right, well, She's kind of corrupt, but I want. We need someone like that. We, we. I don't want a nice person. I want someone who's like totally corrupt and can like, you know, work, can like stab people in the back and shit. And like he does it like because it's like funny, you know. It's like, uh, it, it's a it's a funny kind of thing to say. But that's kind of what bothered me about it. Is like it was it was yeah. it was written like a bit. It wasn't written like actual yeah. political commentary. But it wasn't it wasn't funny enough to 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 kind of implicate that he maybe didn't believe it. He was just for the joke. Yeah. I think he's like really, he really meant that, which is like yeah. another thing, right. another thing in, in his politics that are just like so backwards. Well, you remember when, I mean, the, the one I was thinking about was, uh, and the one where I was like really rolling my eyes was, uh, was he, he, he was, uh, he did one where he, like one of these, you know, brilliant Louis CK bits where he, uh, 
he talked about how much uh, we we should not vote for Bernie Sanders, and he had this analogy of like, imagine. And I have a feeling that he really thought he was brilliant. This was his email. Like he sent an email out that was like really bad, yes. bad, bad. I was yeah. like, as I was reading, I was cringing the whole time. But he was like. Imagine this is the this is what the election is this year. Imagine we're all on a plane and the plane's having problems and you know we have three different pilots we could ask to do it. It could be Trump or it could be Hillary or it could be Bernie. And he had this like stupid analogy that is so like it's such a dumb way of thinking about politics at all. But like he ended up saying that basically like Bernie is a guy that like maybe he could fly a great plane in theory, but like So wait, is that is that the email where he called Trump Hitler? Yes. Yeah. And uh, yes, basically. And 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 he got a lot of flack for it. Like people were like, you know, upset yeah. one way or the other. But like for me, like the problem was a just the the stupidity of the like airplane analogy. And also, oh, yeah, that like how he used that analogy to completely dismiss the candidacy, the candidacy of Bernie Sanders, like just be like, oh, well, maybe, but no. Like you just want like you oh, yeah. like his thing was like that Hillary is the is the best option here uh, because she knows how to fly the plane. And it's just like that is so boring. Oh yes, that that email. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, there was another one too that was like almost equally as disgusting. Yeah, all all of it was embarrassing. But like I don't know. So so yeah. I, I guess the 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 story for me like uh, of Louis like in general was that you know I discovered Louis. And, um, or early, or early on in, in his like, um, I guess his stand up renaissance is is I guess that happened yeah. in like two thousand eight two thousand nine and then he and then he yeah. did the show on on FX which um, captured a, a lot of people's attention because it, it it seemed to like be a very fresh take on like a a, a half an hour a television like comedy. And all that stuff Very, is really yeah. good. Like, I mean, when I think about Louis, like, like what I, th- that's what's challenged me this week. Is I, I thought when, when this, when this news came out, I was kind of like, oh, well, whatever. Like, I knew it was true. Uh, I kind of thought I, I had been thinking about it for a long time, and I, I knew it was true. And now I get confirmation, and so fuck him. You know, I'm kind of done with him anyway. I wasn't. I, I didn't really. I don't really even care. I, I really didn't even want to see the movie. I thought the movie was like it looked gross, and I, I didn't want the like. Woody Allen shit going on because yeah, it, but yeah, but but either way, like I kind of like tossed him aside. But now, like, and on this, totally honestly, like I started having like dreams about it, and like I started having dreams about wow. where I'd wake up in the middle of the night and be like angry at him, and it w- made me realize like you know I'm angry and I'm like disappointed because I actually did like the guy. Like I I I really like it probably invested more yeah. thought in him um, than I have really even even recognize consciously that I've been like a big fan of Louie for a long time. And like, and that's faded, but, but th- this whole thing made me and him in the news made me realize like how profound a, a loss it is in some ways, because it's like, you know, I'll, you know, it's no big deal. I'll, it's, it's not like, you know, I, I, it's not like I lost a child or something, but I lost a, right. uh, you know, I, I lost someone that I, that I did look, look up to. Like I actually, like there were clips of Louie that I thought were, really sharp takes on like whether it be you know a political thing or he had some really really good bits and like it's, yeah and and it, it was it was a it was a thing that it was more than bits it was i felt like he was actually speaking to um something truthful and that's like the the the, the best comedy is the comedy that that gets to something real and it seemed like he was one of those guys and now like to me it's like the the fact that he was hiding this all the time and like lying about it all the time and finding that out is just profoundly disappointing for me. It's, oh, I mean, for me too. I, I mean, I, he showed himself as, as the true artist with his more so his shows yeah. and his, and uh, the other stuff that he did, like he was truly unique in that sense. Um, almost more so than his, than his standup. Um, it's really just really brilliant stuff. And like you said, it kind of spoke to, Certain demographic, definitely our demographic, you know, especially disenfranchised kind of bitter people, and and New um, Yorkers too. Like it's a great, and New it's Yorkers, a great New yeah. York show. Like he, he and and I don't yeah. know. There was something that re- it's weird because it's like Louis reminded me of me in some way, and reminded me of you in yeah. some way, and like uh, even yeah. you even more so because um because you like to jack off in front of people all the time. No, just kidding. Um, <laughs> no, because uh, uh, no, because. You know, you shoot you shoot film around New York, and like you sh- and like you're always trying to like capture this kind of street thing in New York, and like that, that's what he he was like a 
I don't know. He was like a, a an underdog, and I think yeah. that's probably an underdog and, and like an independent filmmaker and someone that I was kind of yeah. rooting for. And you know, those little pieces that he did about like the some of the pieces that he did on the subway were. I thought captured like a sensibility that we were going for in our stuff whenever we were shooting stuff and like thinking about like how to capture New York. Oh yeah, I mean he he did it he did it so so well and and all better maybe than than anyone else just be, and he had kind of total creative freedom in what he was doing so he was able to kind of push that forward in in, in his own true vision which is which is quite amazing that's the other um, element of him that was inspiring right is that he was like this guy that was vision, like he yeah. like he, yeah he well he did whatever the fuck he wanted he was like free he liberated yep. himself he's like i just sell my yep. shit on the website you know like i yep. make a million dollars on, on and 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 all that stuff was like you know this guy is on to something Great. he's cool and and you know i don't know at a certain point it started to turn like it started to turn as i i don't know if this is like maybe a product of like getting too big or something like that and just being like able to do whatever yeah. you want, having people kiss your ass all the time, yep. everywhere you go. It's like a poison. It really is. I mean, it's just interesting to me to think that like he had his, the rest of his life. He could have done whatever he wanted, and he probably would have for the rest of his life. And it's just all gone now. Yeah. Which, and to me, I, I feel justifiably so. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm. I'm. Fi- uh, I'm uh, fine uh, with it. Like, I'm fine with it. But I'm also like, I. Uh, uh, that. That's. That's kind of why I wanted to talk to you and like talk a little bit of this out is because I'm fine with it. I and I was. I was like, I yeah. saw the New York Times shit, and I was like, well, I knew that was true. Fuck him. You know. Wow. What an end to all yeah. of this. But then, as the time yeah. went by, I realized, you know, it's kind of. I don't. There's something like. There's something weird in me as I'm realizing like how much this guy meant to me and how. Uh, you know, yep. of all the people like I don't give a fuck about Kevin Spacey. I knew no. that. I, I I mean, I already knew he was a creep, but I, I I mean, I wasn't really a fan of his work. I don't even think Kevin Spacey is that great an actor, honestly. No, no, not really. <laughs> um, uh, it really super overrated. But and and Weinstein, you know, I I mean, I thought of him as just like a fat, powerful piece of shit already. So like, it didn't really change my perspective. <laughs> yeah. But Louis, Louis, this no. one, this one hurts a little bit, not because I thought he was Gandhi, but because like I appreciated what he was doing. And now I'm like, God, like, do I, I don't, I don't know, like, looking me, at it again will be weird. It's going to be very weird. Uh, to, and to me, it's like, it, it kind of reveals, it's like one, one more tick of darkness. You know what I mean? Yes, like, right. all the shit that's going on in the world and like all of this stuff is being revealed. Like, there's, right. it's all, that from all aspects. Yeah. And now, and now just this, and this isn't going to be over. There's going to be more people that come out. There's going to be different types of scandals that come out. And it just like shows you how fucked up the world that is that we live in. And, yeah, and, 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 and the weird time the, we live the, in. The darkness is creeping in. Yeah, yeah. Or, or at least we're, I mean, I guess the optimistic person would say, you know, we're, we're pulling the curtain back and we're like, you know, something positive is happening because yeah. we're like, we're like finally seeing like all the, the way that power works and a, particularly for women who have been on the like victim end of this for so many centuries to yeah. have it like all yeah. happening in this wave like this is is kind of yeah. extraordinary and so i think a lot of i mean mm-hmm. i think it's right to be like positive about it and i don't i mean i don't think like yeah. like i'm not sitting here like thinking that the angle and i know you aren't either that the angle is that i'm like mourning <laughs> mourning the loss of oh, louis, God, louis no. ck it's 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 like no. to me it's like it's weird because he his work, like his work, kind of signaled this. You know, we, I, I remember the one of the first specials I watched of his. I don't know if you remember this one, but it's like one of his early HBO specials or something, um, where he like told this story of how he like put peanut butter on his balls and made his dog like lick his balls. And I had a dog when I was a teenager, and <laughs> yeah, I did once. I. I made my dog lick cottage cheese off my balls, which is something you now can't unknow. You just know it. I did this. And I only hesitated to start the sentence only because I wasn't sure whether to say that I let my dog lick cottage cheese off my balls or that I made him. (laughs) Like, seriously, like... I remember watching that the first time, and it was the first time I kind of understood, like, what Louis was doing. Like, that he was, like, pushing the envelope and, like, 
He was being like extraordinarily truthful about really cringy, cringy shit. And I think that's part yeah. of what is like difficult to think about because it's like he was so he's like who would share that first of all, and the fact that he shared that and it felt like really dangerous for him to share it. It felt gross, but there was something endearing about the fact that he shared it. It was like wow, like that's really an intense thing to like say in in front of a crowd and make comedy out of. But now like looking back on that shit, it's really weird because he made a, he made a lot of like uh, jokes. A lot of his bits were about shit like that. Like a lot of his bits were well, about and, like uncomfortable sex shit having to do with his dick specifically. His dick. And yeah. he talked a lot about, obviously he talked a lot about masturbating. He talked a lot about how much of a pervert he was. And yep. like, there's a bit about like, Oh, these like just sick sexual thoughts. I just wish I could just, you know, it's just debilitating. I wish I could just get rid of them. But some things don't change and some things I'm sick of like the constant just the constant perverted sexual thoughts. I'm so tired of those. Just the constant. She's sucking. It makes me into an idiot. I'm jacking off to morons and then, eh, look at my tits. Yeah, your tits are awesome. It's just a dumb part of life that I'm sick of. It's all day, too. It's just, you can't have a day. I just want to be a person in clothes walking in a store and just, I just want to go to a library and ask for, hi, ma'am, is there, uh, I'm looking for a book about early Abraham Lincoln, like when he was like, I'm just to wrap your hair around my dick. And oh, shit. And everyone's like, oh, ha, 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 ha. You're, you're so funny. What a funny bit. He's like, no, really. I, no, yeah, literally, I'm, I'm suffering here. <laughs> Yeah, it's crazy. I mean, he had a, Which is like, he had a, a bit now that he said like that I thought was always like one of the like uh, one of the most like brilliant ways to do a rape joke and because like it's very I think rape jokes are very difficult to pull off you know and make them like yeah. make them like not yeah. only funny but also like not promoting rape but like saying something about it but I remember him doing yeah. I mean do you remember this was, uh, he said it a lot he was like uh, he'd make he'd, he'd he'd bring up rape like the word would come up and then he'd say something like I'm not condoning rape obviously you should never uh, rape anyone um, unless you have a reason like you want to fuck somebody and they won't let you in which case uh, what other option do you have how else do you Supposed to have an orgasm in their body if you don't rape them. I mean, what the fuck? <laughs> Think about that joke now, right? Like, <laughs> oh god, I, I kind of want to go back and watch it. Now. It's, it's like, like insane. How, how weird. And there's yeah. that th- there's that Fox News. What well, was he? Okay, so there was an episode of Louis where he was on Fox News, and like he, the whole thing was about masturbation. And there's just this shot. Yeah. I, I, we should use it as the shot for like. Um, when I post this episode, but it's like it, the shot is just of Louis on Fox News, and it says like Louis C.K. masturbator, like like li- that's literally how they identify him. So it's like he's been like making jokes about the fact that he just can't stop jacking off for like twenty years, which is really bizarre because like, you don't get that with yeah. like Cosby. Cosby's jokes are all about like playing basketball and like playing records and stuff like that. Um, yeah, I mean the writing. The writing was definitely on the wall. You know, everyone. I just think people either didn't want to believe it or they knew it and they didn't care. You know, that's yeah, really. That's I don't really know, but it. I thought, but I listened to those jokes and I never and I and uh, I laughed at so many of them and I never thought like oh, like this is this, this might be really happening in real life and so I shouldn't laugh at you know no, what I mean never. like I never had never. that thought and and you know these rumors. This is another example of like. Um, missing like Gawker and Jezebel. I think Jezebel's still around, but Gawker and um, oh, what's the other one that just went away? Oh, Gothamist. Oh, uh, Gothamist. Yeah, and uh, DNA yeah. Info and like these uh, these like kind yeah. of like half gossipy, half lefty kind of like news outlets. Occasionally, like really good articles. Occasionally, really good articles. Mostly shitty, but like the yeah. they they're the ones that like Gawkers. They broke the Louis C.K. story in 2012. Like they were talking yeah, about it years ago. like five years ago, and I remember it, yep. and I re- and I remember not really knowing what to think about it. I mean, I was kind of in the Mark Marin territory. I remember he talks about like, oh well, we kind of heard these things, but there was never anything specific connected to it, so it seemed like it was just like in the air. So it was hard to tell like what to say about it. But like as time went by, to me, like it became kind of obvious. Like it's like this is there's definitely something to this.
Oh yeah, and I think a lot. Some of that was a little bit of the he was wearing the crown, so nobody wanted to believe it then. You yeah. know, yeah. Uh, there was a, there was a lot of like brushing it under the rug, like, well, he says it didn't happen, so whatever. You know, yeah. I think it took I think it took more more of the women to come out for people to to really kind of be like, okay, this is real. Yeah, and I, I, to, I mean, I, one of the women that was like talking about this a lot was uh, Jen Kirkman. I don't know if you know her, but she's like a she's a comedian. Yeah, yeah, she's on Twitter. She's yeah. awful. Like I think her like she literally her brain is broken. Like she like uh, she became like this like really insane like Hillary person. And like if you go to her Twitter now, she's basically talking about like how Russia controls everything and all that shit. Like she's totally she's totally <laughs> oh, nuts. But. You know, yeah. she was she was one of the people that was like saying this, and like it's weird. It's just a weird like intersection of like he said, she said, po- and politics and everything else. That's like hard to yeah. um, hard to take apart. But as time went by, like uh, for me, I, I honestly the thing that made me really believe it and think that there was something true about all the shit that people were saying about Louis was um, was the episode of his show with Pamela where he like pushed her against the wall. And do you remember this episode? Like. I do, yeah. Yeah, I don't. I don't remember exactly what happens, but he like he like kind of traps her physically in the house, and like he was he was definitely like exploring this kind of territory. Oh yeah, I, I mean, I really want to kind of go back and and uh, and watch that again now, but um, I'm sure it's going to be super disturbing. Oh, definitely, yeah, because it's like he's like acting out scenarios that he. Um, he apparently it, it gets off on. I mean, one of the most disturbing stories, I don't know if you read all the details of these stories, but like the main one obviously is that yeah. like something had happened at the Aspen comedy festival in 2002, uh, two, wo- right. uh, two woman comics went to Louis's room and he just like literally took like all his clothes off was totally naked and just started like jacking off in just front of them and, and they didn't yeah. know what to do. And they just, and I, and it, it's just like this fucked up story. Like it, to me, it sounds like a, like a crazy person or a drunk person. Um, but I don't yeah. think any of those things are true. I think this is just like, this was just no. him, like, uh, just put, because I can. Um, but because the, I can, yeah. Yeah. But the, the story that really got me, and this is not like, there's nothing, fi- there's nothing physical that happens really, is there's a, there's a comic that said that she had like just met him at a show, like a small show, at, like, you know, one of these small comedy clubs. And she was in the audience, like up, like in the front row, or you know, towards the front. And like Louis had already done his set. He came off stage, and kind of like approached her from behind. And he didn't, she didn't know he was there. And she had just met him that night. And he just like leaned in, lead, leaned into her, and like put his mouth like right on her ear and whispered directly into her ear, "I'm gonna fuck you so hard." And he like said it like really aggressively. And she was kind of like, "What the fuck?" And, like, to me, like, that story is so, like, that story told me more about his, like, character and pathology than anything else. I was like, what kind of fucking dude does that? Like, if someone, if someone's like, doing that to your wife at a party that you just, she just met him and he just comes up to her from behind and, and, and whispers in her ear, I'm going to fuck you, like, really aggressively, you would, I would think that person was a total psycho. Like, that guy's got serious like, problems. And, like you said, he, be, because, because he can yeah, you know, he did it. He did it because he can, and he he at that point had years and years of of people telling him he was like the the biggest comedic genius in history. Yep, and but again, it comes it goes back to this 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 power angle. Yeah, it's like, like we, shouldn't have, we shouldn't powerful have we shouldn't have this. Men. Yeah, I mean, it's, if if we could like learn anything from this, um, and and like what we have to do, and this this is why I think. Like, if Justin were here, I know what he'd be talking about, like the big structural stuff and how this all connects to global capitalism or something. But, like, the real yeah. for me, it's like this is an opportunity. And the opportunity is not to, like, I mean, the, oh. the great, it's great to, like, clean out the closet and get all the scumbags out. But, like, the bigger question is exactly what you're talking about. Like, how do we create a system in which men don't have the power to do that? Like, don't feel like they can get away with shit. And I think like part of this Me Too thing that's happening is cool because it gives it'll give a lot of men pause. I think they'll think like, well, I'm not going to get away with this, you know, like it'll come back yeah. to haunt me. And maybe in 15 years it'll come back to haunt me. But um, and like that's that's one step. I mean, that's that's one step in eliminating this stuff. But it really is an opportunity to like investigate the idea of power at all, like in our society. Like, why do we why do we grant why why should 
a guy like Louie be able to tell a bunch of dirty jokes that are, you know, some are marginally clever and like a- obtain a power to like basically indulge whatever sexual impulse he has um, and, get yeah. away- and and have everyone cover for him that like there's something wrong with a system like that. Yeah, or a marginally talented actor who throws himself on underage boys at parties. Yeah. And uh, doesn't even remember it because he did it so many times. Yep. And oh, oh, mean, that, that was one of the twisted things in Louis. Uh, that I don't know if you caught that. That, like, it was like Louis uh, was, was, he's been like writing to girls and apologizing for like the last several years and like trying to like clean yeah. up after himself, basically. Yeah. And, and like one, yeah. Of the, one of the things he said was like, that was disturbing is he wrote to a girl and uh, he wrote to a woman and was like, uh, you know, I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. I shoved you in the bathroom and, and like held you in the bathroom that time. Oh, it didn't even happen. Yeah. And she's like, I, that wasn't me. And like, that's that there's something fucking chilling about that. Cause that, oh, that, that means God. like he doesn't even remember who, like who he did this to. And that, that he, he, there's, there's probably a lot of people that he did this to. God. I, I mean, it, it, going back to what you were saying about like how, how, the power structures and how this happens, what I what I really really hope doesn't happen is that this is just like the story for 2017, and then it just gets brushed under the rug again. It probably will um, be though. I mean, we, we've yeah. we, you and I are pretty cynical about that stuff because we you know we've seen the like we've seen I've the seen like it. hashtags come and go. You know, like right. we, uh, the ice bucket challenge and like you know uh, Coney 2012 and all that shit from years ago. Like, but but yeah. even more recently, like things uh, fads come and go. I think yeah. that's, that's part of what makes me think that like Trump will drop off at some point because the news cycles are so fast now. It's like. Who gives a fuck? I mean, we we just mentioned yeah. this recently that like there were six hundred people shot in Las Vegas like a month ago, and nobody even mentions it. That's like gone. No one even mentions it. Gone from well, the news. And then, and then the, the shooting, then the shooting in Texas. Yeah. What did you say that that that's like the third, the third or fourth biggest mass shooting in 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 the U.S. history, and it happened like thirty days after or yeah, less yeah. than thirty yeah, days Yeah, I think after. it's a two two of the four largest, uh, most deadly mass shootings in American history have happened in the last forty days. And I, and nobody, I like went into work like the next day after the Texas thing. Like nobody was talking about it, yeah. and I, I can't tell you the amount of people that that I encounter that are. A willing, a willing is not even the right word. Like they need to do it for their own like psyches to just like kind of brush this stuff off. Yeah. Well, I think like, it's uh, there's something exhausting about it. You know, there's something like what is there to say about it? And like, yeah. it, it, it's it's super fucking disturbing that it's so normal now because you know they were talking about um I don't know you see like uh there's some government official I don't I don't remember who it was but a government official last week was talking about mass shootings and. He basically said, like, well, Americans are just going to have to get used to um, the idea that they could be shot at any moment. And they're going to have to have a kind of combat mentality. And, like, we should probably oh have, God. like, training in schools and stuff like that. And Claudia, um, you know, she's she's teaching at a community college right now. They have uh, active shooter training at their at the school where they, like, teach the kids what to do. And it can't I mean, oh I can't help but think about, God. like duck and cover in like the 50s you know of like the nuclear bomb and everything but like what i was reading about was a was actually like a military blog and it was talking about how the effect of like combat the effect of like a a person a soul like a soldier in combat that that is um basically in fear of being shot at any moment that has like i mean we call it we call it ptsd post-traumatic stress disorder but it has an effect of may of like completely ruining a person's body and mind, like literally ruins their, their mind and body. And what this government government official was saying is that every American should be in that mindset all the time. You should be in a war mindset. And so it's like what that means is that Americans are, are, are we're walking into an era and in which in which we're to be literally afraid of being shot and killed on the street at any moment. It's like living in Iraq or living in Israel and there's nothing anyone's going to do about it. Um, that's a, that's a really, yeah. uh, to me, th- I mean, you don't get a better indication of like a completely broken society than the idea that there are just massacres for no reason are just normalized and yawned at every day, every day. And, and, and 
and and literally no reason. Like yeah. we still haven't we still haven't found out that the the motivations behind the Las Vegas killer. It doesn't even matter. Like, I, I feel like it doesn't even matter. I mean, it matters to like Trump because if it's Muslim, he's going to like close the borders or something. Well, of course. I mean, it it doesn't matter in the sense that like it's going to you know just keep happening and who cares who, who right. where it's coming from. Yeah. But just that it, it there's a kind of psychologically scary aspect of like you can understand Muslim extremism. You can understand like someone that's just, like I'm, I'm crazy or like I hate my mom. Right. I'm right. just like I'm gonna go kill my mom and like there's other people. But literally just like some faceless person killing for the sake of killing is yeah. just beyond something that's comprehensible. You and know? Yeah, and they're getting bigger. Like they're getting like more and more. They're getting bigger. Um, more and more like a fucking contest. And and uh, yeah, yeah. If I could, I mean. If I could connect it to the Louis thing at all, like all, all of this, all of this has to do with men in our society, like either powerless yeah. men or powerful men. Right. And there's like yeah. th- there's something going on with that. And it's not it's not easy. It's not easy to figure out. Like there's definitely not a, 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 an easy way out of this. I don't propose any solution because who am I to, to, to figure out all these problems? But I can't help noticing that like it's all men that are involved in either these like powerful men that are um, getting away with all their sexual abuse shit for years and years because they're powerful or like men who feel powerless uh, achieving uh, some degree of like release. Like with the gun, and I think about the gun and the dick, and like you know, sh- showing people that like in public and bringing it out. Like there's something, there's something really, really something there. Cr- crazy going on with men in this country, and and I can't help but think it's part of like a wider crisis, and it's kind of the crisis that we talk about a lot in this show. And 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 kind of what you were saying about the PTSD as well. Like these, you know, these abusers basically creating. PTSD type situations in these women that are like they're destroying their that's lives. That's right. Yeah, yeah. For, no, that, that's for, for that's the great. Rest of their lives. No, I, I, yeah, that 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 connection is is there too. That the idea that like, uh, of trauma and the idea that like there is, um, we are a very unhappy country, and like it seems like that a lot of this stuff is indicating that. But I don't know. That, that there's a lot of different ways to look yeah. at it. I think that um, I think that there is something positive to say about like the 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 Me Too hashtag and what's happening. Um, but Very I, much. I but I think that it will be a mistake to um, think about this in terms of like bad individual men. As much as all the individual stories are very interesting and it's so juicy to find out the details of uh, how Kevin Spacey's a shithead or how Louis C.K. is a shithead or whatever. It's also, you know, if it's happening so much, it's definitely indicating something bigger than that, than just like a bunch of individual creeps. Yeah, you haven't you haven't seen much about any sort of large systemic problems. I mean, at least written about extensively, which I think, as you said, needs to be addressed, you know, uh, in order for anything to be done in the future besides just a few bad apples. Right. Yeah, exactly. That's, I I think that's exactly what we have to avoid is like seeing these guys as a few bad apples, like, like uh, getting obsessed with all the like details of, uh, you know, what Louis did uh, um, is, is, I don't know. It's interesting for us because we're, we're, we're so close to his material. Um, And, and and like, I now like I'm thinking about like so many jokes are coming up. I mean, do you remember that uh, the, the Saturday night live monologue that he got like, Kind of, he got like a lot of people were upset with him and like Saturday Night Live monologues or whatever. But like he, yeah, he he, tr- he basically tried to defend like child rapists. Child molesters are very tenacious people. They love molesting childs. It's crazy. It's like their favorite thing. I mean, when you can, it's so crazy because when you consider the risk in being a child molester, speaking not of even the damage you're doing, but the risk, there is no worse life available to a human than being a caught child molester. And yet they still do it, which from, you can only really surmise that it must be really good. I mean, from their point of view, from their, not ours, but from their point of view, it must be amazing for them to risk so much. How do you think I feel? It's my last show, probably. (laughs) Because... 
Like, I can't key into it because I love Mounds Bars. I love Mounds Bars. It's my favorite thing, right? But there's a limit. I mean, I, I can't even eat a Mounds Bar and do something else at the same time. That's how much I love them. Like, if I'm eating a Mounds Bar, I can't read the paper. Like, hmm. Mm. I have to just sit there with it in my mouth and go, why is this so good? I love this so much. But, and because they are delicious. And yet, if somebody said to me, if you eat another Mounds Bar, you'll go to jail and everybody will hate you, I would stop eating them. Because they do taste delicious, but they don't taste as good as a young boy does and shouldn't <laughs> to a child monster, not to me. And like thinking about that yeah. bit now, I'm like, God, yeah. like what kind of, I used to be like, oh, he just has a really like, he has a really free imagination that allows him to like kind of go to some dark places to figure out like and bring back these comedic truths for us. But now I'm like, no, his mind was already in like a very dark place. And he was like kind of, Dude. these are like glimpses into it. Like that now just, I mean, just talking this through and like thinking about all, all, uh, all of his bits, like it's very disturbing. It is. <laughs> I, be, beyond like what I originally thought, thought by when this first came out like yeah. actually thinking about the stuff that he said i mean I, I feel like it goes beyond just like oh i don't know i like to masturbate in front of girls like there there's something more there like what would he have done something else or did he do something else that he had, maybe hasn't gotten caught for yet who you knows know? but the pathology yeah. is there and like Disturbing. Uh, yeah. um you know there was a there was a profile of him like just a month ago for the film um of the new york times before all this broke and the the reporter asked him about this stuff and he was like um i just read it the other day and he like he just lied he was like i'm not gonna address that there's no truth to any of it it's just rumors and I'm not going to give life to rumors kind of thing. And it just, yeah, it just like right. the fact that, I mean, he, that was just like 30 days ago. You know what I mean? Like he was yeah. hoping to like ride all of this out and just like get away with it. Um, but it, but in a weird, in a weird sense, like may, maybe, like you said before, maybe he, I mean, he knew, maybe he knew this was coming out. I obviously, we're not going to get a chance to see that movie, but I almost feel like from what I've heard people talk about, it was. It's almost like an admission. Yeah, like he made he made a, a, a pair from what people say a pretty like disgusting movie about uh, un- dating underage girls and and masturbating. Like one. Well, of the it's a take on like, Manhattan, just, and like Manhattan itself is yeah, about that. Yeah. Like uh, I think that right. it's 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 actually. I mean, it's a direct reference to Manhattan. The whole film, everything about yeah. it. You know, the way he shot it in black and white, and the way he depicts all these characters. It's it's meant to be a kind of like rumination. And like he said, like yeah. the, what he wanted, what's chilling actually in the interview, he's like, what I want people to get out of the movie more than anything is that you never know anybody. Like you think you yeah. know people, but you don't. And like that's, there you go. that's kind of disturbing. And like, I don't know that you could always bit torrent that movie if you want to see it. But that's it right there. Like he, he was he was basically like he must have known like it was soon. It was coming soon. And to say yep. to say you don't know anybody. It, yeah, it, he he must he must have known, and that's especially especially kind of chilling to to make an entire movie about that too. Yeah, uh, it's it's I, I I mean I'm done with Louis. I mean it's just kind of it, there's something sad about that for me personally a little bit, but like in general it's yep. not, it's not that big a deal. I, I had kind of been done with him already because he'd been so dumb in public a, a couple times. But I will say you know we'll wrap this up. But I I want to say. Um, that I don't know if you saw this, but in the New York Times, like Manila Dargis, who's a really she's a great film critic, and and she wrote a really really like beautiful piece on all of this um, in the Times like just a couple days ago. It's a review of the film I Love You, Daddy, and she watched oh, interesting. it. She watched the film uh, at the Toronto Film Festival and wrote a little bit bit about it, and then. Um, watch it again in light uh, after the scandal broke. And so she's got like, she has thoughts about like being, I don't know, she has thoughts about like the whole comparison to Manhattan. She has thoughts about Woody Allen and she puts it all in the context of like being a woman, like a film critic. And it's just, it's like a really, really great piece. It's probably better than everything we just said in the last 45 minutes. But like, it's a really, yeah. really, really great piece. And I would suggest anyone that um, that is interested in these topics and, and, and wants to hear something new, like a fresher take on it. And from uh, a woman who has like a really great voice, Manila Dargis' review of I, Loved, I Love You, Daddy, in the Times is uh, really great. Um, so what do we do now? Like, nice. like burn all our Louis posters and stuff? <laughs> I think so. I... I... <laughs> Well, I had an. Int- I was the thought of an interesting question. Yeah. 
would will will you will I will people if Roman Polanski comes out with a new movie will they see that? Yeah, because I'm just thinking now for my like whole life he's basically been in exile accused of all this stuff and yeah, I yeah. saw all of his movies I, and I loved them. Yeah. So it's like now does, does that change? Does it? Do people think differently about that or, or what? You yeah, know? I, I, it's, it, it's, it's, some people get away with it. That's what we, I mean, that's kind of what yeah. we've seen is how, how like arbitrary and political <laughs> a lot of this shit is. It's like yeah. Louis was kind of untouchable. And like, it's, it's funny that like, it's not funny. It's kind of sickening that like, you know, there were reports about this in Gawker, Jezebel, several different like media outlets. And he didn't feel the need to like say anything until like the Times took him on. You know what I mean? New York Times. Yeah. So it's like not Times. real yeah. until it's the New York Times. And I mean, it's again the power issue. And and like, you know, he was able to get away with it in part um, because people felt like they couldn't. They couldn't um, say anything without being damaged themselves. Like be like people would call you crazy and shit like that. And I think that. Like that, from what I understand, that was kind of the job of his uh, manager, this guy Dave Becky, was to kind of yeah. like cast doubt on on these women by like kind of creating rumors about them and making them like um, making them like kind of outcasts in Hollywood, so that they wouldn't like get any work and stuff like that. And that, I mean, that to me is just. That's what makes it so fucking dirty. It's like not only are you like jacking off uh, uh, in front of unwilling women and like doing this incredibly aggressive, sexually abusive behavior, but then you're also covering your tracks by like ruining those women's like careers. Knowingly and with people's help. Yeah. I mean, that to, that to me is, is just like I, I, that makes me angry. And like that, that was what, actually one of the dreams I had. It t- it, when I have dr- when I'm having dreams about Louis, it tells me something like I probably fucking watched his shit too much. But like I I had you know, the, the, the one dream I had was just like just I, I just was I was in the room with him. And I was angry at him. You know what I mean? Like just like literally angry. Interesting. Like, you're, like you're a fucking asshole, dude. And I think part of the asshole thing is like. The, re- the repulsion and re- uh, with like all of who what he is and knowing like all these elements of him now but it's also like a feeling of betrayal a little bit because it's kind of like yep. y- you know I thought you were cool dude like I thought you were one of yep. the good I, th- I thought you were one of the good ones and that's what Claudia said yep. to me like last night she was like she, she was she said you know she, I mean she was a she wasn't literally a Louis fan but she tolerated it and I showed her clips all the times I feel like a lot of like girlfriends and wives had to be subjected to Louis clips all the time like check this out it's so <laughs> yeah. brilliant look at this bit um but yeah, she like, said oh, what wait, she sorry, sorry. yeah she said what she liked about him what she found appealing about him was um that he he seemed like he seemed like a guy that really understood like gender dynamics and really understood that women got the shit end of things and like seemed to be an actually good guy whose comedy was doing a good thing in like bringing some yeah. kind of levity and awareness to like really serious issues about gender and now he just comes off as a guy who was fucking getting himself off and making himself rich on this shit and there's something really gross about it maybe that's what's uh, very disturbing and disappointing to, to us because I think in a way Louis was kind of a viewed at least or we thought he was kind of a true progressive yeah yeah definitely. and and then and then slowly you know knocked down because of because of all of his uh, political comments uh, during the election yeah and now this yeah so I think like the fact that the fact that we thought he was kind of a, a, a voice for yeah progressive ideas in a way and now now it's just all been shattered and i think yeah that's i mean he, maybe there, why it's, it's so disturbing he had a bit where he was like saying that like i don't know if you remember this one he was like how do women still go out with guys when you consider the fact that there is no greater threat to women than men we're the number one threat to women globally and historically we're the number one cause of of injury and mayhem to women we're the worst thing that ever happens to them that's true. You know what our number one threat is? Heart disease. That's the whole thing. That's it. Just our own heart going, dude, I can't. You can't keep doing this. I told you three strokes ago that this is not smart. But women still think, yeah, I'll go out with you alone at night. What are you, nuts? I'll get in your car with you with my little shoulders. Hi, where are we going? To your death, statistically. How do they still do it? 
If you're a guy, try to imagine that you, uh, you could only date a half bear, half lion. And you're like, oh, I hope this one's nice. I hope he doesn't do what he's going to do. And now you look at that bit and you're like, wow. Like, again, like he was like really see that bit from from the perspective before I was kind of seeing him as like, oh, he's really perceptive about like, you know, male and female relationships. And he understands that women have been victims. But then like to realize that he was saying that in the context of like victimizing women is just so mind boggling. And so like, I don't know, it totally reverses it for me. Yeah. 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 Me too. Me too. Oh, uh, fuck fucking, him. fucking Louie. Yeah, fuck that guy. We're, I'm done. I'm done talking about him. I'm never going to mention him again. Um, no, I think we got it all out. Yeah, no, seriously. I, did, I, I really thank you because I needed to put that away and I needed to put it away with someone else who yeah. really appreciated him. So uh, thanks for talking to me and uh, we yeah, will talk man. soon. Okay, see ya. All right, I want to thank my guest, Peter Sabatino. I had a great time talking to him about Louis and all the other bullshit that's going on right now connected to that and not connected to that. Uh, But I always have a great time talking to Peter, and I hope you enjoyed this conversation. Check out patreon.com slash nostalgia trap. Think about donating to the show. Uh, It would be really helpful to me. I hope you have a great day. Take care. We will see you next time.